This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez, and we'll continue to look at the humanitarian crisis along the southern border of the United States, where more people are dying trying to cross the U.S.-Mexico border than ever before, as President Biden increases funding for border enforcement and, militariz and militarization, even as he vows not to expand Trump's border wall. While official counts show around 8,000 people have died trying to cross since the 1994 start of a prevention through deterrence policy under President Clinton. The deaths are undercounted. Some estimate as many as 80,000 people have disappeared across the borderlands. Well, we now turn to Brooks County in South Texas, which recorded nearly triple the number of migrant deaths this year already so far—98 people. And those are just the ones we know about. The news outlet Border Report said the bodies of more than two dozen migrants who died as they attempted to journey north through Brooks County are now being held in a temporary mobile morgue. This week, the Brooks County Sheriff met with Republican Texas Governor Greg Abbott to request more support. This comes as counties near the Texas border are seeing a higher number of migrant deaths as more people seeking asylum try to cross through the desert to avoid border points of entry, where most people are now blocked from applying for refuge and are expelled without due process. The crisis is documented in the new film Missing in Brooks County. This is the trailer. The federal government thinks if you put the Border Patrol station 60 miles north, Jose is going to be stupid enough to go through there, and then you'll catch him. And that's not true. The Border Patrol station is making these people walk in that deep sand with very little water. I'm trying to have some information regarding a family member who is missing. We realized there was a big problem along the border, and I don't think anybody realized just how big it was. Thousands of people have died. An illegal alien crosser is an illegal alien crosser. It's black and white, it's not gray. We're in a war zone here. This is the South Texas Human Rights Center. It's like you just walk off the earth. It's as if you never existed. Missing in Brooks County follows two families as they go to Brooks County to find out what happened to their loved ones, who they think went missing in that area. In this clip, Omar Roman and Michelle Roman look for Omar's brother. Um, yes, good afternoon. Um, I'm actually trying to have some information regarding a, a family member who is missing. Does Stark County happen to have any information of uh, persons that they have found in Stark County? Brooks County has binders of all the remains and bodies of, that they have found. There's been a lot of, a lot of missing people. That would be the main office then. Uh, okay. Let me, let me go transfer you, let me transfer you to a jail, okay? Okay. Let me pass you back to, communi uh, to communications and ask them if they have any information on that. Hold on. We no transfer you back. Hello? Yes. Do you mind if I transfer you to the secretary, ma'am? Okay, that's fine. Okay. Well, usually when they find somebody, right, um, we usually just... Um, um, we go to the regular cemetery. But in in where's your where's the report? I mean, let me let me check. I don't because I think it's um it's with the investigators. No, I think it's the county cemetery or the city cemetery. A scene from Missing in Brooks County, the film also follows Border Patrol agent Alex Hara, after Eddie Canales, with the South Texas Human Rights Center, asked for help with a family searching for their missing loved one. Craig, uh, this is Eddie Canales. Uh, are you in the office? You're at the Border Patrol Station? Hey, on that case of uh, Juan uh, Maceda, I got a call from his dad. Uh, I think I got some good information. Yeah, it's definitely the Mariposa Ranch. 
branch but as you can see everything looks the same so a person can say well we were waiting by a by a, uh, a fence and the fence is the same three miles back and right here so for us to find that one place is very very hard and this is the third one in a week he used to get to me. So now it kind of, you know, I say we, we don't call them people anymore. We call them bodies. They start calling them people, then it starts getting to you. For more, we go to Brooks County, where we're joined by Eddie Canales, the director of the South Texas Human Rights Center in Falfurias, Texas. He's one of the people you just heard in that clip. Also with us, Lisa Malamut, who is the co-director of this powerful documentary, Missing in Brooks County. The film will be streaming on iTunes and Amazon starting November 2nd and will air on PBS Independent Lens next January. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Eddie, uh, this is just devastating. Um, you have found, what, 99 bodies uh, and remains in Brooks County alone. Is it increasing under President Biden? The, pre the, the, the increase of migration has, uh, has begun since the beginning of the, the Biden administration. And, um, I mean, the the number of people that we've found is is really based on our cooperation and our working relationship with Border Patrol in terms of the families calling here. Uh, I have families here, representatives from different countries right now, um, that are still searching for their missing loved ones. They're in the background right now with me. Uh, we're doing a two-day uh, uh, tour here in South Texas, and the number is uh, has increased. There has been 99 recoveries of bodies and skeletal remains in Brooks County alone this year. And, uh, Eddie, what do you think is driving the increase? Uh, of course, some Republicans are insisting that migrants are coming because they believe that the Biden administration will be uh, has a, a more relaxed policy, so that that is what's driving migration. Others say that it is actually the worsening conditions in Central America and other parts of Latin America during the COVID pandemic that is actually driving the uh, the increase. What's your sense? The the difference is that well, there is uh, still tidy, Title Forty Two that's still in place, so uh, the majority of people are being expelled uh, continually and in, in, uh, under the Biden administration. What is the difference is the unaccompanied, uh, unaccompanied children are being there's been a, a process uh, for Central American children coming in, and then the families are not being separated. But the policy is still the same regarding Title 42. A lot of people, you know, are being expelled without any due process regarding their asylum claim. So uh, all the Haitians are being expelled. Um, you know, most single uh, males and single women are being expelled. So that there's really not hasn't been a change in the policy regarding. It's just the, the question of the children that uh, unaccompanied children that have been processed and and. Uh, situated with uh, sponsors or family members already in this country. And have you seen a difference in how uh, uh, officials treat Mexican children who are found unaccompanied at the border versus Central American children? Well, let me, uh, I, I failed to mention there in that remark about the children. All Mexican unaccompanied children are immediately expelled back into Mexico because it's right there next door. In, in that regard. So the, the process for children that are fleeing basically the same conditions, the same uh, that exist in uh, the Central American countries is, um, you know, these children are being, you know, are being uh, sent back to, to Mexico uh, in, in that regard. And that's been the same uh, pro policy for, for since Obama was in place and, and the Trump administration was in place. So Mexican children are not getting their due process. 
Um, Eddie, I'm going to ask if people behind you can come forward and say their names and their loved one who is missing. And as you organize that, I want to go to Lisa Malamut, who is the co-director of Missing in Brooks County, an astounding, heart-rending, uh, heartbreaking film, Lisa. Um, talk about why you did it and what you're hoping to accomplish with it. Well, originally, we set out to make a very different film about a forensic scientist, but my co-director and I, uh, Jeff Bemis, the co-director and I, went to Brooks County with this forensic scientist, and we discovered what was going on there, and we immediately knew that the story we were going to tell was a much bigger story than we had initially thought, and this was in 2015. So over the course of four years, we um, kept going back to Brooks County for a couple of weeks every three months um, and really just dug deeper and deeper into the story and eventually found the Romans, who are the family featured in our film. And talk about what happened to the Romans and what they found. So um, their son, and, and in the case of the siblings, their brother, um, grew up in Houston. He um, came to the U.S. when he was five. He grew up in Houston, and in his early 30s, he was deported um, back to Mexico, to a country he had never really lived. And he was there for a couple of years and decided to come back to the U.S. to be with his family and to live, you know, in the country where he grew up. Um, and on his way back, he went missing in Brooks County, and his family went in search for him. Um, no, um, no, no answers. And um, they eventually found us through our website. They were Googling missing in Brooks County and they found our film. And so we met them and we talked to them about the film that we were making. They talked to us about their story and we asked if they wanted to participate and they went back um, and discussed it amongst each other. And the next morning we were filming with them. So we, we followed them. Um, going back to Brooks County once again to work with Eddie Canales to try to find their um, loved one, Omero, and, um, and, and they're still looking for him. And uh, Lisa, the, the, uh, the population of Brooks County is just about 7,000 people, and yet estimates are that as many as 2,000 migrants have presumed dead since 2008. Could you talk about the county itself? I mean, it's mostly private ranch land. If anyone knows anything about Texas, um, a lot of Texas and especially South Texas is um, these really vast ranches. Um, one ranch, the King Ranch, is bigger than the state of Rhode Island. So that gives you a sense of how vast these ranches are. And migrants um, are dropped off um, south of the checkpoint so they can circumvent, circumvent the checkpoint. And they walk on these private ranches for days, and they run out of water. It's very, very hot in South Texas. Um, so that's how they are dying and going missing. Um, and um, Well, let me go back to Eddie Canales. You are surrounded, uh, our radio listeners can't see, but our TV viewers can see, by people holding pictures, Eddie. Can you each say your name and your loved one who you're looking for? Diga su nombre. Mi nombre es Araceli de Mejía y busco a mi hijo Edwin Alexander Colinda Ramírez. Mi nombre es Karen Carrasco y busco a mi hermano uh, Aarón Eliazar Carrasco Turcios. ¿De, ¿De dónde es usted? Yo soy de Honduras y mi hermano tiene nueve años desaparecido. ¿Y usted? Mi nombre es Ángela Lacayo, soy de Honduras y busco a mi hijo Harvey Josué Velázquez Lacayo. Eddie, we thank you. Eh, mi nombre es Irma Yolanda Pérez, vengo de Guatemala y ando en busca de mi hijo Herber Estuardo García Pérez, que desapareció hace 11 años, el 10 de noviembre. Migrants yes, from Honduras and Guatemala. Um, Eddie, your final thoughts. Well, again, this is a, a constant uh, situation with uh, families that are that are calling us and here at the center in terms of the search. And uh, th this uh, this delegation of families are here in the United States to bring attention to the situation and and uh, try to try to figure out, you know, what are the obstacles and what's preventing them from being able to uh, 
find their loved ones that are missing, have been missing for a long time. And we will continue to follow these stories. Eddie, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, Eddie Canales, South Texas Human Rights Center, and Lisa Malamut, the co-director of Missing in Brooks County. Um, Juan, we have 30 seconds. There's a major multi-day march going on in New Jersey, where you are. Yes, uh, Amy, the um, the People's Organization for Progress, led by Larry Hamm, longtime activist, is walking across the state. They started in Montclair, uh, New Jersey. They're marching all the way to Trenton, uh, over 60 miles throughout the week, to press the issues of uh, police abuse bills that are before the legislature, and the legislature is refusing to act on, including subpoena power for civilian complaint review boards, making chokeholds illegal, and, and so forth. So it's an important march, and it'll end on Trenton on Saturday. And we'll catch up with Larry Hamm in these coming days. That does it for our show. A very happy birthday to Miguel Nogueira. Democracy Now! has two job openings. Check at democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Stay safe. Wear a mask. Save lives.